Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I want to do a quick review over the antibiotic class known as the sulfonamides. So let's get started. The sulfonamides class has a common prefix of sulfa, S-U-L-F-A, and includes medications such as sulfamethoxazole and trimethoprim, which is a combination drug, and we know it mainly as the brand name Bactrim, and then sulfadiazine. Now, it targets a broad spectrum. So it goes after gram positive and gram negative, but it also can go after some protozoal infections. So it can be used to treat urinary tract infections, MRSA, bowel, ear, lung infections, and those parasitic infections such as toxoplasmosis. Now, how does it do this? Well, it's very interesting because it actually inhibits folic acid synthesis. So it has a bacteriostatic effect on the body. And you want to remember this particularly because whenever we're going over those things to remember, folic acid is very important in some of our teaching. You want to remember the word sulfa to help you remember those important concepts. S is for sensitivity to sulfa and sun. Patients can have allergic reactions with this class. It's actually quite common. And some of these patients can actually progress to a condition known as Stevens-Johnson syndrome. And this is where they have from like their head to toe, major inflammation, their skin is literally peeling off and blistering. And I have seen this in a patient and it is very, very uncomfortable and just a horrible thing. So you wanna look for that. Also, it can cause the skin to be photosensitive, meaning the sun can irritate the skin. So you wanna educate them to use sunscreen when going outside and to absolutely avoid tanning booths. And you want to use caution with other meds whenever they're taking this class because it can actually increase the effects of other medications like warfarin. It can increase bleeding risk by raising the INR. Phenytonin, it can increase neurotoxicity. And with sulfonylureas, it can increase the risk of hypoglycemia. So with a catch-all, you wanna monitor labs, especially INR, blood glucose, and for those signs of toxicity. It can also have an effect on the liver by being liver toxic. It can cause the liver enzymes to elevate, so monitor those LFTs, especially if they're using this long term. Then another thing I want you to remember is about folic acid synthesis being blocked. So typically this class is avoided during pregnancy, especially during the first and third trimester. And the reason for this is during that first trimester, there's a lot of development going on. So there's a risk of birth defects or megaloblastic anemia. And this stems from how folic acid is being blocked at synthesis. And then the third trimester, a condition that can be experienced by the fetus is called chronicterus. And this is where the baby starts to experience high levels of unconjugated bilirubin, which over time will affect that neurosystem and damage the brain. In addition, this class is also avoided in patients who have folate deficiency because it can lead to that megaloblastic anemia. So look at your patient's history. For instance, let's say your patient has chronic alcohol use. Well, you probably don't wanna use one of these medications because they're already at risk for nutrient deficiencies with one of those definitely being folic acid plus they can have liver impairment. And that ties back to the other part of the mnemonic we just went over. And then lastly, the patient wants adequate fluid intake while they're taking this class because that helps prevent crystal urea, which whenever you form crystals in the urine, that can damage our kidneys. So you wanna educate the patient to drink at least two liters of fluid per day while taking this medication, unless of course it's contraindicated and you wanna monitor urinary output and their renal labs like BUN and creatinine. Okay, so that wraps up this review. If you'd like to watch more videos in this series, you can access the link in the description below.